Let's look at this one now and tell me what you think. I have eight x squared plus two x minus 20 all over x plus three times x squared plus x plus two. And I want to do the same thing, right? Partial fraction decomposition. Now, <clears throat> I look at this and I go, well, it's partially factored, right? If this factors, I want to factor it more because I'd rather deal with linear factors than quadratic. But you'll notice that this little quadratic, this little trinomial, does not factor. So therefore, I can't go further than this. So now I have a linear factor and a quadratic factor. So now you're seeing the example where we're dealing with quadratic factors now. How do I handle those? So um, somebody said something about the degree of the numerator being one less than the denominator. So check this out. So I have two factors in the denominator. So I'm going to have two fractions on the right. One of them is going to have the linear factor and the other one's going to have the other factor. They're both only represented once, so I'm only representing them once. The numerator. Well, a numerator of a linear factor is a constant. The numerator of a quadratic factor is a linear type of situation. Now, A is used. That's an unknown. B is another number that is unknown. Bx plus C. Notice that the denominator here has degree 2 and the numerator here has degree 1. The denominator here has degree 1. The numerator here has degree 0. So in a sense, yeah, the degree of the top is 1 less than the bottom. If I have a quadratic factor, though, not only am I representing that single you know, linear term, I also need the constant. So it's kind of decreasing all the way down to you know, the bottom. If I had a third degree denominator, I'd have a second, a linear, and a constant in the numerator. So I'm, you know, I'm, you know, it's, it's starting with one degree less than this, but it's going down to all standard form. Um, so that's kind of a way to remember any kind of situation you have if you need to you know, do partial fraction decomposition. Um, Again, though, it's the same idea where I'm multiplying every, I'm solving a rational equation, so I'm going to multiply everything by this denominator. Uh, let me move this out of my way. Uh, x plus 3 times x squared plus x plus 2. I don't always write that part, but just so you see it. Um, and so that's going to cancel with this whole thing, so this whole numerator is on the left. 8x squared plus 2x minus 20 equals this multiplied by this, right? This is technically over 1, is canceling the x plus 3. So I have a times the quadratic factor, x squared plus x plus 2 plus the numerator here, bx plus c times, this is canceling with this, so I'm left with x plus 3. So I have some work to do here before I can actually, you know, compare both sides. Um, 8x squared plus 2x minus 20. Just double check that you copy the problem down. See, that you copy the problem down correctly. Um, which is funny that I said that because I copied it down incorrectly from the book. So let's see what happens here because I actually did not. I copied it down wrong from the book, yet let me fix it. Let me fix it, just so I'm taking one from the book. What did I do wrong? Uh, 12, not 2. That's what I did wrong. 12, not 2. <laughs> That's what I did wrong. And, um, you know, you don't want to solve the wrong problem. I've done it before. It's not new for me. I do it. 12. This is my original problem. So it was a 12x, not a 2x. And it happens. It happens. So it's funny because I usually always double check when, when I copy down a problem that I copied it down correctly and this time I didn't, being cocky. And guess what? I copied it down incorrectly. So again, a typical mistake that you could make, but we could fix it. And I fixed it early because otherwise I'd be solving the wrong problem. I could solve the other one too, just in, as an example, but you know, let's say I'm particularly solving this one from the book. So 
I want to make sure I solve the correct one that matches. Um, so not 2x here, an actual 12x. Always make sure you copy down the problem correctly. Anyway, let's go ahead and distribute a, this is a FOIL situation, right? So I have to do that before I can compare both sides. So I have ax squared plus ax plus 2a, that's not x, plus 2a, FOIL plus bx squared plus 3bx, right, outer, inner, plus cx, and last, plus 3c. Now I'm going to double check this because I want to make sure I don't, you know, go through that too fast, make an error, you know, everything is legible, readable, uh, copy down, ax squared plus ax plus 2a, foil first, bx squared, outer plus 3bx, inner plus cx, and last plus 3c. So I'm looking good. Now I can compare both sides. So I'm going to start with the highest degree. So now I have a quadratic on the left, and I have one, two quadratics on the right. So the sum of these coefficients, in this case a plus b, should be equal to the coefficient here if the two sides are going to be equal, right? Um, let's look at my linear. So I have a 12, not a 2, a 12 in, in my coefficient here, and I have an a, a 3b, and a c for all my linear terms on the right. So that means that these coefficients, so a plus 3b plus c should be equal to 12. And then last, the constants, I have a negative 20 here, 2a, and I, just a 3c, I guess that's it. So 2a plus 3c should be equal to the constant here, which is negative 20. And here is my system of equations of three variables. And this is a little bit more difficult to solve than the other one. Um, so actually what I'm going to do, let me pull it to my next page so I have space, because sometimes these take uh, space. Let me pull this down, and let's solve this system. I want a, b, and c. So what do I notice? Well, first of all, when you have a system of three equations, uh, uh, three equations of three variables, you want to shrink it down into a system of two, right? Shrink it down into an equation of one. You go down, you know, by one. So I have, I, you know, I want two equations with the same two variables. This one has an A and a B, and this one has an A and a C. Um, you could choose either one. Um, let's just choose this. A plus B is eight. So I have one equation, let's call this equation one, equation two, and equation three. So if I'm referring, you know what I'm referring to. I have one equation of A and B. I need to create another one of A and B from these. So I'm going to use this later, but I'm going to need these two for now to create another equation of A and B. So um, let me copy down. Can I do a couple things in one shot? No, I'll, I'll show all my work. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to try to... A plus 3B plus C is 12, twice A plus 0B plus C is 12, and then twice A plus 0B plus 3C is negative 20. I like to line up my variables so that I can see what I need. Obviously, I need to eliminate C because I want another equation of just A and B. So to eliminate C, I'm going to multiply equation 1 by negative 3, right? Because I want the same coefficient but opposites. So I'm changing equation 2 to negative 3a minus negative 3a minus 9b minus 3c is negative 36. And this one is 2a plus 0b plus 3c is negative 20. And now when I add the two together, you'll see my c's go. And I'll be left with an equation of just a and b. Negative 3a plus 2a is negative 1a. Bring that down. Negative 9b is equal to negative 56. And now I have an equation here, equation here. So back to equation 1. Now I need a plus b is 8. But now I have this other equation, negative a minus 9b is negative 56, which both have the same two variables, which now 
hopefully it's clearly obvious, you can eliminate A very easily, which isn't lucky. And then get B, backtrack to A, backtrack to C, and then you got your three variables, three unknowns, go back to your, to your you know, partial fraction decomposition, and you have your three fractions. Um, all right, so let me go through. Eliminate A, positive 1B minus 9B is negative 8B, and 8 minus 56 is negative 48. So divide both sides by negative 8, B is 6. So I got B. Yay, got one of them. Backtrack. Now, I can find A. Uh, I can, actually, I'm going to go back up here because this one is easy to use. Um, A plus B, which is 6, is 8. So therefore, A is 2. I have A, I have B. Let's go back and find C. Let's go to, actually, either one of these works. Let's do equation 3 because it's easy. Twice A, which is 2, plus 3C is negative 20. This is equation 3 that I'm using. 4 plus 3C is negative 20. 3C space. Subtracting 4 from both sides is negative 24. So C is negative 8. I have my A, my B, my C. Can I represent that here? I'll go back here. Um, I'm going to end. My final result. At the end of the day, this whole thing, right? Partial fraction decomposition. This thing is equal to, I'm not 12. <laughs> Don't want to forget that 12. That 12 uh, is equal to, what was A? 2 2 over x plus 3. <laughs> um, plus bx plus c, what was b? 6x minus 8. 6x minus 8 all over x squared plus x plus 2. I don't like when I circle something and it goes over my problem. Okay. <laughs> and now that I am finished. That is my partial fraction decomposition. If I go backwards and I were to combine these <laughs> into a single fraction, I'd go here and it should match if I want to check my results. And ta-da, voila. I had a professor that would be like, voila, voila. Boom. There's my